As I was thinking about those disciples being out in the sea in a storm, I remembered a ferry trip from the mainland of Ireland to the Isle of Inishmore. We were crossing the sea and everything was calm. Unlike our gospel story, it was morning, late morning, so we could see what was all around us. I remember turning down the Dramamine that was offered. I don't get seasick. As the boat moved further from shore, the water became rougher and rougher. The boat was rocking with the waves. It felt like we were being carried up and then suddenly being brought down. It was the worst two and a half boat, hour boat trip I have ever been on. It was scary. It's easy to imagine being out in a storm. The seas are raging, the wind is blowing, and the boat is riding the waves. Then it is carried up and dropped right down, water spilling over the disciples. There they are, knuckles red from rowing, their hearts pounding as they struggled to keep the boat upright in the storm. Possibly swearing, more likely than not praying, crying out for safety, demanding that these waters be stilled, or at least smooth enough to let them get where they are going. Most of the night they were not able to see where they were in the midst of the blowing rain and wind. The moon was covered with clouds, so there was no way to really know where they were. Then toward morning they look up and they see before them a figure. There it was, walking toward them. What in the world? Surely this is a ghost. It has to be. Walking on water is not possible. Did the, did the disciples hear Jesus when he called to them, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. With the storm raging, the wind and rain blowing, I'm sure it would have been difficult to hear what was being said. Yet Peter, the rock, calls out, If it's really you, command me to walk. And he hears Jesus say, Come. And boldly Peter steps out onto the water and walks until he thinks about what he's doing. Then he lives into his name, the rock, and he begins sinking. <laughs> Often we hear, if only Peter had more faith, if he didn't doubt himself, if he could have kept his eyes on Jesus, if, if, if then he would have been able to walk on water to Jesus. But we're not supposed to walk on water. Whenever others think we walk on water and whenever we believe we walk on water, then we begin to sink. This passage is not about us or Peter being able to walk on water. This passage is about Jesus and his message of take heart, have courage, do not be afraid, I am. Jesus is right here, being here for each of us in the midst of the storms and the boats rocking in our lives. Jesus, the one who was transfigured before Peter and James and John in last week's Gospel reading, now stands before all the disciples in the middle of a storm that is tearing the boat and frightening these men. They look up and they see Jesus. He's right there in their midst. That holy presence of his is right there, right with them. Take heart. In one of her sermons, Barbara Brown Taylor says, if there is a miracle worth savoring in this story, maybe it's not that Jesus could walk on water 
After all, if Jesus is God, then his ability to walk on water is no more surprising than your or my ability to walk up a flight of stairs. And the miracle is not that Peter managed the same trick for a moment or two. No, the miracle is that when it was all said and done, while a soggy Peter sputtered seawater out of his lungs, and as the boat continued to bob around in the dark mooring light, somehow in the midst of those humble surroundings, way out there in the middle of nowhere, the disciples realized that no one less than God's own son was sitting right in front of them. So they worshiped him. They believed. That is the miracle that the disciples recognized Jesus in the midst of all that was happening. He was there with them. They saw him and they believed. They had faith, faith to live out of their heart. Different translations use different words. Some say take heart, some say take courage. The root meaning of courage is heart. Professor Caroline Lewis says that Jesus may be saying to the disciples and to us, faith means living out of your heart. You are going to have to lead, live, and love with your heart. Trust yourself and trust your heart. In these days, sometimes the boat is moving calmly on course, and we all feel like we're moving in the same direction. And just as quickly, something rocks the boat, and we begin to be frightened, blaming one another, and we lose heart, grasping for the nearest life preserver, whatever that may be. In the midst of chaos, God is there. But we, in the midst of a storm, a fire, a whirlwind of chaos, we often don't see God at that moment. It's in these times of chaos that we are called to live and to lead and to love with our hearts. Jesus reminds us that we are not called to walk on water, but to be faithful. We are reminded to trust ourselves and to live from our hearts. As the waters rage around us, when our lives become as chaotic as the storming seas, we are to look for the divine presence. We are to see Jesus, hear Jesus saying, take heart, do not fear, it is I. If we look at the beginning of this reading, Jesus needed to be alone. He too needed to get out of the chaos. He had just heard of John's beheading, and he was in the midst of 5,000 hungry and tired people, and he was leading disciples who needed to be guided almost every step of the way. Jesus needed time in silence. We are often called to listen as others grow through tough times when they feel like the waters around them are raging, bills are piling up, money having to be used for medical expenses, unexpected things, a family member having a crisis, people feeling like they are stretched in so many different directions. And in the midst of it, we are there ready to listen to help out in some way, to show up. In the midst of the messiness of life, Jesus does show up. Jesus shows up through others, through presence, through love. 
The Holy One is speaking, saying, Take heart, do not fear, it is I. The miracle is not that everything is taken care of and there are no more worries or woes. In the midst of all the messiness, God is present. God doesn't just show up when we yell a cry of help. God is present always. The miracle is that we notice it. As the disciples recognize Jesus standing before them, may we too open our eyes and our heart. May we live from our heart and recognize Jesus standing among us here this morning and in the midst of the chaos of our lives.